Dr. Cynthia Bulick from the University of North Carolina is one of the country's foremost experts on eating disorders. And we have a panel of young women who are brave enough to help us talk about this. So please welcome Tiffany, Kimmy, Danya, Kat, Marissa, and Nikki. Hi, girls. Hi, Cynthia. Nice to see you. So, Tiffany, I know you're 18 years old. You're a high school senior. How much pressure do you feel on a daily basis to be thin? Or how often do you think, I don't like my body? Um, well, I'm actually on a sport, so I row. And weight is kind of a factor. And um, I'm currently going for lightweight. So it's 130 and under. And I'm overweight right now for the specific category. So there's a constant like, oh, like I have to get down. I want to get down. I want to do this. But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, well, you know, that bagel looks really good. And like, I really want to eat that. <laughs> and Kimmy, I know you're 21. But when you were in high school, you struggled with an eating disorder. What was the catalyst? I think it started out um, the way that a lot of girls do, um, even like with Tiffany, where you start to decide you want to eat a little healthier or you want to cut something out of your diet. And then it just, like it does with so many girls, it kind of spirals out of control and it um, became something that consumed my life, my every thought. So eventually, you know, it got so bad that my parents, um, they sought help and uh, I went to Castlewood Treatment Center to get inpatient treatment. And Danya, I saw you basically nodding your head in agreement. Tell me about your situation. Um, I did track for two years, my freshman and sophomore year, and I'm a pretty slim person, but being on a sport puts a lot more pressure on your body type. And I just figured that, okay, I'm doing track, I need to stay in shape. And so what I would do is I would eat ice instead of eating dinner or eating lunch. The water would fill you up so you're not hungry later. And then like instead of eating an actual meal, I'd eat more ice. And then it kind of just became a habit that I didn't even realize I did. And it just kind of spiraled out of control. Like I was still healthy, but I became a lot thinner than I am now. And it well, was really bad. You know, you were all athletes, but what about the social press pressure? Just sort of looking the way that you think you should look, that the magazines tell you is is perfect or beautiful. How did that play into it, Kimmy? I think that the media is a huge thing. Um, we're constantly bombarded with images of women that look perfect and they're thin. And then you have um, weight loss ads and they have a very thin woman in it already. And so you start to equate your self-worth with your weight and what you look like. And if you don't look like the women do in the magazines and on TV and the things that our society values, then your self-worth is less. Dr. Bulick, you know, there were magazines and weight loss commercials when I was growing up. What didn't exist was the proliferation of social media. How has that contributed to girls feeling bad about themselves? It's incredible. It makes these trends, all of these trends, be like a virus. It can just spread so fast and so far because social media is everywhere. And we really have no idea just when you're clicking through things, when these things are going to pop up. And it just lures you in to engaging yourself in these trends and these diets and these unhealthy behavior. It also makes you compare yourself to all your friends and all your contemporaries, right? It goes right into what Kimmy was talking about, about this quest for perfection. Like I just heard last week of someone, there's like this like competition. It's like you post a picture of yourself and how many likes do you get? Yeah. And if your friend gets more, it's like, oh, I got 100 likes. Ooh, I only got 80. You know, and oh, and that's so nothing bad. new. I mean, that, that's with adults, too. I think it so feeds into our culture of narcissism, but that's a whole different show, I think. <laughs> but, but let's talk about some of these trends. You know, my daughter, I don't know whether she was telling me, but I know in, uh, some of the girls she knows, if you say you look frail, that's a compliment what? to girls now. It's not like you look strong, you look healthy. You look frail is supposed to be flattering. And another trend is this whole notion of thigh gap. I know a Google search on how to get a thigh gap uh, got over 17 million hits and, or results. And, and there are Pinterest pages and Facebook pages devoted to this. Is this prevalent, Kat, in your school? Have you all heard of this, Kat, Marissa, Nikki? Have you all heard of this whole thigh gap obsession? 
Absolutely. I think girls can spot a thigh gap a mile away. And you'll look to your friend and you'll say, hey, do you see her thigh gap? And she, even if she's not the prettiest girl or the smartest girl, you want to be like her. And if you know you can't have your thigh gap, if you realize my jeans aren't made for that, then you are going to make fun of her and bully her and tear her down so she feels uncomfortable and insecure about her thigh gap. And the other trend is this bikini bridge. All right, so tell us about this. And uh, girls, have you all heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. one of you, explain what this is. I'd almost rather not, but this is sort of like the Golden Gate Bridge so that there, when you have your bikini on that there's a gap between your hip bones. And this becomes something that people post on Facebook. They post pictures of their own bikini gap. And then people that don't have one when they lie down feel inadequate. Have, Marissa, is this prevalent in your school? I mean, it's not one of the most um, popular trends we have in our school, but it is because a lot of girls feel like if you can see that bone, like you're super skinny, it's like the more bone you see is the skinnier you look. And I don't know if guys look at it, but it's like a lot of like what girls want. Like we don't look at guys anymore. It's like, oh, what's that girl saying about me? We don't care what the guys are thinking. Yeah, so it's all about to impress other Impressing girls. Impressing other girls, yeah. And, and Nikki, if you said, this is so stupid and such a waste of time and who cares and I'm proud that I don't have thigh gap, whatever, what would people say? They would just tell me that I'm in denial. That, that you're I, what? That I'm in denial about how I want to look, that I'm wrong and then that I really do want to look like that, but I just want to be who I am. But that's not true, because I think a lot of girls rather not have that, but then you have some, it's just like if you don't have it, they judge you. Well, also joining us for this conversation is Dr. Jean Kilborn. She's the creator of Killing Us Softly, Advertising's Image of Women, which studies the effects of images in the media on young girls. Jean, I feel like we're so much more aware of things like Photoshopping and the fact that, uh, you know, images in media have been altered, and yet attitudes don't seem to be changing. I mean, what is your response to what you've heard here today? I think it's asking a lot for the attitudes to change um, quickly, because we've all been brought up for so long, surrounded by these photoshopped images, told that this is the most important thing. Girls get the message practically from birth that it's all about how we look. And so, yes, now there's a little bit more awareness. We're learning that these images are artificial, that they're you know, constructed by Photoshop, but we only get a little bit of that message, whereas we still get inundated with the message that this is, th this is how you should look, and furthermore, that you could look this way if you just bought the right products. Have you seen a dramatic shift with the advent of social media in the way girls are perceiving themselves and their bodies? Yes, tremendously. And as Cindy said, part of it is that girls have always been comparing themselves with models and celebrities, but at least there, there's a slight sense of, well, maybe I can't look quite like that. But when it's their peers uh, who are using their photoshopped images and that sort of thing, then there's much more pressure to think there's something wrong with me. In fact, we have a clip that shows just how dramatic these photoshopped images can be. Pretty remarkable, isn't it, to see what they do to show bodies not found in nature. And in fact, do you think sort of the whole, I, I guess, media business or beauty fashion industry is selling anxiety to women and girls? And so I feel like it, it's hard to wrap your brain around something when you've almost been brainwashed. Do you yeah. feel that way? You know, it's interesting because I think there are some good role models out there. And here's a recent example, the New Zealand singer Lord. A picture came out, you, you guys know this, a couple weeks ago, and they had photoshopped her. And she, perfect skin, she looked gorgeous. And she was like, hey, wait, that's not me. I've got acne scars. And she posted the real picture. And I think that's the kind of thing that can help us get over some of that conditioning. Right. We see more people saying, hey, this is what I really look like. Well, up next, we're going to be talking about, yeah, yay, let's give it up for Lord. We have to support people like that.